Okay. Hello, everyone. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome. So good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Monica Nation, the traditional custodians of the land I am on here today in Charlottesville, as well as the um, Canarsie and Muncie Lenape Nations, the traditional custodians of Bridgewood, Queens, where Frank is tuning in from, and pay respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. And of course, my cat has chosen now to start jumping on my lap, so apologies for that. <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank our sponsor, DeWitt Stern, for helping to make Frank's exhibition at Second Street Gallery possible. So my name is Kristen Chiacha. I'm the Executive Director and Chief Curator of Second Street Gallery. We're a 501c3 nonprofit art space in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'd like to welcome everyone to a very special artist talk, an artist in conversation with Frank Webster and Warren Craghead. So before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. We'll have an open uh, Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So please enter your questions in the Q&A chat box at the bottom of your screen on Zoom. Um, if there's something that makes sense to answer immediately, we'll do that. But in general, we'll try to hold off questions till the end. And second, tomorrow is our last day to view our Frank Webster and Laura Wooten exhibitions at Second Street. We'll be open by appointment today until 5 p.m. I'm not in the gallery, but my colleague Megan is um, right now. We're also open from 11 to 5 tomorrow. Um, so you can make your appointment by visiting virtualssg.org. Walk-ins are always welcome, as long as we're not at our 10-person limit. And you can also learn about our exhibitions in the gallery on our website, or if you follow us on Instagram or Twitter and Facebook. Um, so moving on, I'd first like to introduce Frank Webster. Um, Frank currently lives and works in Queens, New York. He received his BFA from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and his MFA from the Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers University. He has also attended the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture. Frank is the recipient of numerous awards, including the NIFA Fellowship in Painting, the Pollock Krasner, and the Golden Foundation Individual Artist Awards. He has shown in solo and group exhibitions in New York at Blackstone Gallery, Transmitter Gallery, Sarah Meltzer Gallery, and White Columns, among others. Frank completed a mural project in Northwest Iceland in commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the NES Artist Residency. His most recent Icelandic series is currently on view at Second Street Gallery. And then we have Warren Craghead. He's an artist who lives and works in Charlottesville. His drawings, collages, paintings, books, and mail art insist that art can be accessible, cryptic, and beautiful all at the same time. Warren currently serves on the board of directors of Second Street Gallery. And if you know Warren, you know that he draws a lot and has exhibited his work internationally as well as all over town, like literally everywhere, all over town. Warren received an MFA from the University of Texas at Austin, a BFA from Virginia Commonwealth University in Richmond, and he attended the Skowhegan School of Painting and Sculpture in 1993. Ah, Skowhegan. So that's the connection. <laughs> <laughs> so when I mentioned to Warren a little over a year ago that I was planning an exhibition. That's our connection. <laughs> yeah, Frank here at Second Street Gallery. I said, Warren, I think you know Frank. Well, not only does he know Frank, but they attended Skowhegan together and they were even roommates in New York City. We were roommates. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> Two years. <laughs> So I know that Warren, you're looking forward to Frank coming to Charlottesville for his exhibition, but unfortunately the pandemic had other ideas. So I thought who better to interview Frank for this virtual artist talk than Warren. So I'll be quiet now and you take it away. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, well, welcome Frank to Charlottesville. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you can't be here in person, but maybe someday. I wanna point out to everyone that behind me on the wall, uh, is a drawing that Frank gave to my wife and I when we got married. Um, so I'm the proud owner of, of Frank Webster in my collection. And uh, I think all of you should be too. So you should go down to the gallery and, uh, and look at the work and pick some out because uh, the, the, the show is That's fantastic. great. So um, <laughs> what, we, what Frank and I talked about doing was going through a slideshow that he has set up of, of the work and some of the, the ideas that he's thinking about. And then we can um, 
just go back and forth and just talk. And um, if you have questions, I'll have the Q&A open. And um, as Kristen said, if it makes sense to, um, to ask a question right away, we'll, we'll try to deal with that. Otherwise, we'll try to get to them at the end. But um, I appreciate everyone being here and I look forward to um, seeing to seeing what's going on. Frank, it looks like we lo just lost your, um, your shared screen. So. Warren, can you, can, you sit, can, can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. Okay, hold on a second. Yeah, but we lost your shared screen. Okay, can you, can you see the screen? Okay, let me just, uh, let, me, let me get out of this and I'll try, that. I'll try to pull it back up again. Okay. I think we're, um, I might, I might stop my video. I might stop my video because I think that's probably taking a lot of, um, a lot of. Um, okay. Well, I'll go ahead and just keep talking. So, <laughs> well, you get it set up. A lot of, so a lot of bandwidth. <clears throat> right. I'll just keep talking while you get it set up. So, um, those of you who haven't seen the show uh, yet, and I hope you do go. Um, what they have set up. Oh, here we go. You can, we can go ahead and, and, and start this because you'll, we'll see okay, some. Great. It's back. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Here it is. Okay. All right. So let's start. So go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and talk. I'll, I'll keep, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is basically cat. Yeah. This is me in my studio, obviously. Um, so um, let's maybe go, uh, I'll go to the first slide. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly read this and then, and then we can kind of get the conversation. Um, Catabase, Catabase's Imagination and Memory. Um, this Icelandic series by Queens-based artist Frank Webster is a reflection on silence and solitude, the power of nature and a collective descent into a figurative underworld. Following his eyes into Iceland, Webster began working with, the imagery, uh, during, with this imagery during the April 2020 quarantine when Queens was the epicenter of the current global pandemic. Webster describes, describes his seclusion in his studio as paralleling the remoteness that he experienced when walking in nature, and he strove to capture that psychological topography within each watercolor's exploration. Webster's, Webster currently works in an industrial space in Queens, New York, after attending several residencies in remote locations in the United States and abroad. Um, he commenced a series of large-scale paintings reflecting those environments. Um, regardless of the geographical location, Webster persistently investigates the subjectivity of perception by and overlook details in cohesion with the natural, natural world. Um, Webster's work, which ranges from small ethereal watercolors to 10 foot wide panoramic paintings like the stuff behind me, um, depicts both the natural, the nuanced allure of the natural world and humanity's interdependent relationship to it. His formal explorations of his tenuous harmony in our ecosystem is apparent in all of his work. A strong concern for contemporary environmental issues permeates Webster's most recent work on the ethereal landscape of Northwest Iceland. The juxtaposition of his immediate urban surroundings and the expansive natural world depicted provides an immersive experience for viewers and a longing for the solace of wilderness. Although at first glance, these paintings hark back to the tradition of the sublime and grand tour travel paintings, on further examination, they reveal a wistfulness for things passing, permeated with a sense of urgency that is emblematic of our current period of rapid climate change. So that's a little political, but we'll leave it at that. Yeah, well, what I, what I like about your statement after you know, really looking at the work too, is that you pull together a lot of threads of things that are kind of, um, in our lives right now. I mean, obviously from climate change, anyone probably doing anything with landscape, that's that's a sort of um, place for it, but also ideas about the pandemic, okay. about isolation um, and about making and trying to find hope in that. So, so what's this you're showing us now? Can you hear me, Frank? Can anyone hear me? <laughs> I can hear you, Warren. Yes. Okay. This, is, um, this, is, this is the mural project that um that i created i said yeah yeah we're just going to talk over each other unfortunately i think the the technology is a little zoom is fun we'll see how this works yeah um we'll be fine, this man. is this is the this is the mural project that i did in iceland in 2018. that's the last time i was up there and it was um it was basically for the commemoration of the 10th anniversary of, of the ness artist residency which i i visited before um and it's a particularly um, wild and remote landscape, um, even by the standards of Iceland, 
it's it's kind of far from you know the sort of more touristed parts of the of the country in the south, and um, it really I, the best I can describe the my feelings about it was was sort of like Wyoming with an ocean, um, but this is this is a this is a mural on a, a former fish factory which is which is now the the residency, and so I painted this um, you know. Um, just uh, the next slide will give an idea for scale. That's me in front of it. Um, my little signature on the left. Um, so it's a pretty good painting. And um, this is the general environment in which it's located. So it, it kind of looks out into this, this sort of landscape. And it, it mirrors the mountain that's portrayed, which is sort of the, the local um, mountain which is a long sort of um, history of legend and um, which I won't go into right now, um, but it's a, it's a very magical place. Uh, so I'll just kind of go through quickly a couple of these to show sort of like what this region looks like. Um, lupins, which are um, actually Alaskan, but they look pretty in this context. Um, this, is the, this is the valley. Um, it's very, it's just a very, very, well, I, a, a lovely spot. I, I really like this place. Um, so, yeah, going what... forward to my studio in Queens, which is where, this is where I was working on the, on the exhibition that's currently up. And so I was working on these large scale paintings, as, as you know, which were supposed to be exhibited at Second Street Gallery. And all, you know, all hell broke loose, of course, this year with um, the pandemic. And so they're, they're kind of, they're kind of, we're figuring out, I'm, I'm probably going to show them someplace in New York. I haven't, I haven't quite figured this out yet, but um, that's, that's the, that's the general plan. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is where I was working. So I was, I, I created a little landscape for myself in the studio, um, very urban, very urban environment. Um, and so the, there was this kind of dialogue going on between these kind of places that I remembered and, and could imagine and the sort of reality outside, which at that time, you know, I think when I started working this series, this series was fairly grim and there was a lot of, lot of, lot of genuine human tragedy that was, um, you know, that was occurring. Um, so this is just another view of, of this painting, which is, um, yeah, which is actually from um, a, a, a residency project in, in Wyoming. Um, but I'll, um, I'll skip right now into the exhibition. And so, yeah, this is, uh, this is- well, a, Let me, let me ask you Sure. Let me ask you a question, Frank, to go back to the studio. Um, a lot of, so I, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember even from your work from, from a long time ago when we first met, um, the work is not like, you know, I took a picture or I set up a painting and, 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 and painted, it's things pulled together from various sources, um, pulled together to make, um, to make the work. Yeah. That you yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. There's a, I mean, I, 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 you know, I respect all sorts of painting. Uh, I think the tradition, I, I come, you know, from Chicago originally. So it's, the, the tradition has a lot to do with surrealism. So there's a lot of things that, about appropriation and collage um, that go into, into the process of my painting um, that is a little different than probably say a plein air painter would approach the, the same sort of project. Um, and, and so I, I think in that way it has kind of a, it has its own sort of uncanny or unique quality to it that, um, that uh, you know, I, I, is my own. Yeah, um, what, one one thing that I've always uh, one thing that I've always loved about your work is that there's a, 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 a I'm I'm going to use the word text, but that's not really the right word. But there's a I mean you're making decisions, right. which are making um, something for us to see, um, as opposed to recording something, which again is a perfectly great way to make work. Um, I just think I've always I've always been very interested in in that, and I think as we get to some of the work that's in the exhibition. There's a few um, that I think we can really talk about some of the sort of story or narrative that gets baked into it. So absolutely, absolutely. So um, I'll let me just I'll I'll move to the next the next slide and we can start start in with the exhibition. Um, 
Yeah. Excuse me. So this is, yeah, so this is kind of a, 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 a I would I wish I could have seen the show. The um, installation that uh, Kristen did is, is absolutely beautiful. I'm, I'm very happy with um, how, she, how she put it together. Frank, I'm just um, going so, to interrupt just a second. Uh, um, I'm going to turn your um, your video off just because you're a little choppy and I think okay. that might help with everything. I just. Yeah, no, totally fine. Okay, great. Hi, Warren. Hi. Um, <laughs> can you can you hear me okay now? Yeah, you sound a lot better. This is better. Okay, yes. great, great. Yeah, so um, it, it, Kata, just to briefly, what Kata, Kata Bass is, is it, it, it's, it's uh, the descent to the underworld. And, and in, you know, it's, it references literature and psychology. Um, and it's sort of like, I think, the, the feeling of being in lockdown, what it felt like for, I, I mean, I can only speak for myself, of kind of going into this place that's very interior um, and very very, very much like into, into your sort of existential being. Like that, that, sort of, that, sort of, that sort of experience is kind of what I, I was thinking about it. <laughs> and let me just, I'll move in just to show more of the exhibition for people who, are, who haven't had a chance to see it. Yeah, I, I, I think that the title you chose for the exhibition is, um, I mean, it's in direct opposition to one's first glance of the work, which is of these, landscapes with sky and, and, and um, not what you would think as a descent into the underworld, though I do, I do think as we talk more about it, um, I, I really, as I, I should say this, as I spent more time with the work, um, I did feel more and more that feeling of an elegy or a sort of um, a sense of sort of loss, as well as some hope. I'll say that too, and we can get to that later on too. But um, I, th I think that very um, much. Yeah, I, I think that there's a it, it's a great title for for the work because I think it already even walking in and seeing that and then figuring out what that means um, sets you on edge to experience the work in a in a in a a, a deeper way. So um, and yeah, the installation is great. I mean, it's fantastic. So let me let's move into the first sort of large yeah, image. Up close. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you can see you can see there's a lot there's there's a lot of, of drawing and redrawing um, with this um, with this with this with this little piece. And uh, you know it, it, they they actually they were they were right. very kind of obsessive and labor intensive. I didn't have a lot else to do. Let's put it that way. <laughs> well, can you talk a little bit about how you like? Um, I mean you know, just a little bit about how, how you build up an image like this or how you, are, are you working from different photographic sources? Are you, are you sketching? Yeah. People or? Yeah, I work, I, I usually what I do, what I'll do is um, I have, I, I have a, a couple of notes when I, when I'm, when I'm on, in, on field, in the field, I'll, I'll be obviously with the camera, but I'll also, you know, bring a sketchbook. And so I'll kind of work out um, some sort of general ideas in terms of, of what the composition might look like, um, you know, just very quickly rough, rough sort of drawings. And then I'll also make photographic references of a site. And usually quite a few um, images will then kind of coalesce into, into some one or two sort of, um, of images in the series. And um, yeah, with this one, I could. You, the, I think that yeah, this was a this was several days, you know, of work on uh, in terms of sort of getting the, um, the composition. I, I've I've done a couple of versions of it. I think this is this is the one that I like the best. That's um, you know whatever. Uh, other people might have other opinions, but that's um, but yeah, and it's just a it's just a, a mountain of sort of a small mountain range. Uh, you know, hiking near the residency, um, and um, this, you know, these these little glacial rivers that are kind of, you know, moving through the landscape, and and it's just a very, you know, it, I, the, the the landscape is it, it's just very it, it really ev evokes that sort of like um, um, that's sort of primordial space. I think I think um, as an outsider, I, of course, if you are an Icelander, it's it's this is like going to the grocery store. Right. It's not that, it's well, probably it's, not that exciting. Yeah, it's good that you're not near to it, so it's it's still enchanted. 
you know, in some ways. Yeah. Well, yeah. One, one thing that as we, we can move through some of these, um, sure, what, I, what I really think is great too is that, I mean, I know we, we, you know, I know that the notes and stuff you took up in Iceland, but really these works to me are not about Iceland at all. <laughs> I mean, that's sort of the, the, the thing that's there, but it's not necessarily um, yeah. what you're depicting. So, right. I, I tend to, I, yeah, I, it, you know, I, I obviously have a, you know, a complex relationship with, the, with that whole sort of tourist image, whatever. I, I think that's, um, that's absolutely right. I mean, these are, these are very much, um, you know, of, of, of the experience that I was having in, in, in the making of the, of the painting as well. Right. So I think that, that there's a connection between, you know, you know, sort of the memory and and also the painting of the of the memory and and how your imagination changes things, how you how you know how cognitively we we sort of arrange space, you know, around abstraction, um, all of those sort of stuff stuff. But also, all that sort of stuff. Plays. Yeah, and, and also where you where where you were both mentally and physically at the time you made these. I mean, I I, I feel like it's important to remember that these yeah. were made um, in quarantine and also not quarantine like we're having, say, for a lot of us here in Charlottesville, where the neighborhood I live in, I can go outside and walk around and stay away from people. I think in the middle of you know one of the densest cities in the world, <laughs> you you might not have that freedom and you might be much more locked up. Um, and so. Um, I, 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 I think that's another, another thing to think about when looking at these. Oh, this is a great installation. Yeah, I think, I think for a lot of people, it was a... You're breaking up, we can't hear you. Yeah, and, and I think that, yeah, I think, you're, I think you're absolutely right about that. It's a different, it, the, the, experience, the experience was definitely um, of being in a very dense place. I mean, I, you know, where we were, I know a few blocks away there was a you know first death you know like that the sort of things like that you you kind of like um, oh it's like oh yeah this is very real and it's like oh this is not a it's not a hoax folks. <laughs> so hey for this one that that we're coming up with this um, this cataract and or this waterfall and the and the, the water there it looks like we lost your um your um your sharing just now. Um, I'm interested in how some of your uh, how you build. Can you up can you see the screen? No, we can't see the the shared screen right now. Yeah, um, but um, okay. Hold on one second. Let me try. Uh, let me try. Uh, let me try that uh, again. Get, yeah, as you get that back up, um, I, I'm somewhat in how you just. I mean, I'm trying to pry some secrets out of you. <laughs> like not not secrets, but like I'm interested in how you build up sure. the the space on it with um, pencil and watercolor. Here we go. It's coming back now. Um, can you, can now, you see this? Can you, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, we got it back. So um, I'm interested in how you sort of build these things up because Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, just, yeah, just in terms of the basic, uh, it's, you know, technical stuff, it's, you know, sort of build it up with a, excuse me, maybe a, maybe a drawing, uh, you know, the graphite drawing. Um, then come back with washes, um, then go back in, you know, and, and pull out areas with the drawing. Uh, a lot of it's very, it's very intuitive though. It's very, um, it, it, almost like automatic drawing, especially something like this. It's, it, it, it gets very abstracted at, at, at points. And, um, you know, so there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a certain element of surrealism to, I think, my approach to it, which I, I know in your drawing is, um, is a big part of it. The, the idea of intuition and, and also sort of free association. So yeah. I think that, well, yeah. I allow that kind of stuff in. I think of it as like finding you know, I'd rather find stuff than impose. That's just me. I have some some artists who are friends who are, who are I greatly admire are big finder, big big you know planners, and I I so admire that work too. Um, but I imagine doing this too at this scale is very different than your larger paintings too. Where here, those you probably have to go oh, yeah. back and forth across the room again and again, and here it's like it's all right there for you, I suppose, on a table. So. Yeah, right. there's a there's a there's a there's a great great immediacy to this type of work uh, that um, that I do enjoy, and it's also I can get that that gratification of having a finished piece in like a couple of days as opposed to a couple of months. Yeah, and that's um, that's definitely that's definitely there, and sort of like 
that uh, you know that's that's very true that, that these are um, these are as much about finding as they are about um, you know sort of exact rendition. And I, I definitely am like looking for the happy accident. Right. And then and then being uh, being aware enough to like <laughs> to keep it too. Um, yes. This, yes. So back to that one. Can you go back that one slide nineteen? Because that was one we we talk, I, I've looked at and thought about a lot. Um, yeah. Because um, both, um, and we spoke a little bit about this, it's sort of like literally descent down, almost like as you move back into the space, you're, the rocks are sort of closing in on you. But also um, where we're standing, where our viewpoint is, there's no rocks underneath us either. <laughs> you know, we're yeah, yeah. water. And so there's, to me, I, I love this one because there's such a sense of um, uh, of unsteadiness and sort of, I think it really brings that feeling of the world is upside down or, or things are not, you know, things are not going well, or, or I can't, you know, the bearings are lost, which I, is something. Right. That, um, I, th I think, I think, I think, I think that's a, I think that's, a, that's accurate. And I think it's, it's the sort of thing I see after the fact, you know, right. is as you're sort of like studying this, like, why are you making these choices? Yeah, I think that, you know, I, like I'll just go through the sequence, you know, it's definitely, there's a feeling of, of descent to, um, to what we don't know. <laughs> right. I think that's, you know, not to, not to belabor it too much, but I mean, it was, the context was, was, was definitely, definitely had a, had a lot to do with this work. I mean, also, you know, I was also dealing with changes in plan. You know, I had been accepted to Arctic Circle residency, which I'm, I'm still hoping happens. Um, but you know that that was all I was expecting to do a whole different body of work this year, and that well, uh, this is kind of like returning to something that I had um, that I, I had been you know wanting to work with, but then like really deeply examining it and and kind of coming out with something you know a little unexpected. Well, let me add, let me ask another question because I thought about that with the Arctic residency. Like you're going north to these um, um, barren sort of places i mean i know there's some foliage or whatever but um to me i mean what i saw in this work too as i looked through it a, a few times is um a sense of endurance as well like survival and endurance like those lichens and moss on those rocks right. go through hell you know in iceland um and so is there something about going north you know going to these these places that um, I know in the past you've done work that's, you know, like I said, the, the one we have here is of a gas station. Um, I know you've done yeah. more lush environments too, but. Yeah, I think, I think at that time I was working with, um, with sprawl and it, that um, the imagery around that was the, the suburbia and, and kind of the built environment of, of America. Um, and yeah, I'm definitely interested in the North right now um, I, I think it's just uh, the, there's a lot of, of 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 stuff that's happening. You know, it's the we are going through this um, this this global change. We're not quite sure how things are going to end up. Again, with you can go into pandemic, but you know, global warming is also is also affecting this. And you know, the, the, if you're if you're into the environmental um, literature, you know that there's connections between the pandemic and some of some of our our sort of um, you know maybe ill-advised um, treatment of our environment. Yeah. Um, that, those, are, those are all things that are out there. So I think when I look at this, yeah, I mean, for me, the, that has been something that's been very interesting is, is sort of like, yeah, these sort of environments, they're kind of on the, on the fringe of livability. And I, I think that's, that's um, you know, that's, that's very much like the case in the North. Um, not that I, not that I wouldn't go um, to Costa Rica and paint down there. Too. I know I have no problem with um, you know expanding the project to that. But when I look at the the long view of my work, yeah, it's uh, it has to do with um, sort of dealing with different types of environment, different types of landscapes, and how how human beings are interacting with it. I think that's a that's that's kind of when I look at it, that's the, that's kind of the common theme. Yeah, I would even I would... back to the. the that yeah. the the natural history paintings that, that I was doing back when we were, were children at Scout. Yeah, Europe. when we, I mean, it's almost 25 years ago um, yeah. that, we, that we met and that, right, that's the work you were doing then. And I agree with that. I, I, I thought about, you know, prep for this, thought about the work and, um, you know, it's one of the advantages of getting old is you can look back and actually see the threads. <laughs> Not that we're old or anything, but no one's, no one's back old. and see the threads <laughs> and it kind of can help you uh, 
point towards the future as well. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I think um, um, I, I think that idea of of um, of examining you know the world and then yourself at the same time is a, is a is a is a is a great one. And and also I I love the the lesson of like. Um, you know, you can find things as well as, 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 as playing them out. So, um, so, um, yeah, well, let's move on. Let's see some more. Yeah. yeah. So let's, yeah, we'll kind of, we can just kind of go through maybe if you, if you want to ask me some questions about particular ones, that maybe that's a, that's a good way to do this. Um, I can just kind of go through. Yeah, I just sort of move through and we can um, see, because yeah. I think there's, there are some people who are on the talk here who, who aren't in Charlottesville, who haven't been able to see the work in person, right. which I would suggest everyone try to do because um, there is a real, um, as I, when you were uh, off at the beginning, um, there's a real, um, they have a real presence, even though they're small, even though they're behind glass, there's a real presence there. And I would say in conjunction with the work in the main gallery of Laura Wooten, it's a fantastic uh, double punch of a show. So I would, I, I, was, I would love to have seen it. It's yeah, her work is great. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. how, how things are going to um, be. Yeah. So um, I guess as as we move through these, I mean, so you are. Is, did you approach these the same way you approach your 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 large scale paintings as well? Like you know, like you said, collaging together different photographic things, looking from notes. Or, or is there a difference between those pieces that are that you showed in your studio or that are behind you now in the studio um, than than these? Um, or or do you approach them right. the same way? I they're they're very they're very similar and they kind of what what I think usually develops is I'll make um, with the large scale work I'll make a lot of, of small scale stuff and I with the watercolors watercolors have turned out to be you know, uh, kind of a, a practice in and of themselves, but they 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 do feed into the large paintings. And so I will make um, these often as um, um, studies, I guess you would call them, uh, for for larger compositions. And um, so there's yeah, let's, let's there's keep the slides because we're going to run out of time, and I want to make yeah, sure I see that. Yeah. I know you've got some some punchlines at the end, so okay. <laughs> not punchlines, yeah. but some big hits. Yeah. So some of these two right. with the cataracts of waterfalls too have a real um, right um, sense of danger about them too. I think there's one. Uh, I don't know if we've gotten to it yet, where it feels very um, there's a scariness yeah. to them sometimes. Right. The, these this group I think isn't particularly scary, um, but they yeah they just um, subtle uses of color. Um, I think through these. Uh, uh, and a little bit of hope. Um, yeah, a little bit of uh, Rainbow Bridge, the, yeah. the Asgard. So I think that, I, I, here we are back. At, here we are in the waterfall. Yeah, Godafoss. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's the one we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, yes. that is. Yeah, because I was telling the story how. Around. Yeah, I was telling you a story how when yeah. I was a kid, we would go to Niagara Falls sometimes. Um, and one time we. Um, we saw they were fishing a dead body out of a guy who'd fallen in um, a couple of days. Yeah. And so, um, again, here. Yeah, I think this, I mean, this is. Um, but I, I, I think too, watercolor is really unforgiving in a way, like you can really mess it up easily, which I have learned um, myself over and over and over again. <laughs> so to me, the restraint that you show right. as well is pretty admirable. Um, yeah, this one's great. Yes, and I, I, I definitely, I mean, definitely with the work I'm doing right now, I'm very interested in the elemental power of water. Um, and the, the, the large work in, in the studio, I think it has more, it has as much to do with geology and uh, the, the forces of the earth. Um, what I see evolving is an interest in this, which is, um, yeah, I'll, I'll pull through a couple of different ones that might yeah. sort of help. Well, water to me is something that is like impossible to draw. <laughs> so I do it all yeah. the time. It's like I try yeah. to draw lights at night. And so it's it's always impossible. So when I see something like this, I'm just like, I'm amazed just how you, how you get it to work. Where it's definitely paint. I mean, I can tell the medium, it's not photographic. And yet at the same time, it's definitely has, has the feel of it as well. It's a real... 
um, impressive uh, balancing act of, 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 um, of creation, um, of making something in a formal way. But I also think, again, there's this destabilizing. I mean, here, in this one here, slide 35, it's like the whole landscape is almost water. It's like everything's washing away. It's like a, like, right. like a blood or something. And so it's, um, there's a real terror to it, I think, a calm, beautiful terror, which is a, that sort of idea of nature also as not really caring about us at all. It's going to do what it's going to do. Um, yeah. And, yeah, no, th I think I think things. Yeah, that's you know, the the old Berkey and Sublime um, right. that uh, I think comes yeah comes into play in, in these kind of landscapes. Um, but yeah, it's again just the installation. Um, right, and I this love one on the the left, I'll I'll go into. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say I love going back and forth between seeing them up close where I do feel immersed in them and then um, seeing the, seeing them back at scale again and be like, Oh wait, you know, these are not very big yeah. and yet they have a bigness to them. So. Yeah. I think that that's, that's uh, yeah, that's sort of the key is to, to figure out how to, how to uh, portray that scale and that sense of, of wonder um, right. in something, something that's very intimate. Yeah. Um, and delicate. And this, yeah, this, um, uh, this group, I, I think, was um, something we were talking about the other night. And this, um, you know, th th these are in the lava fields, um, you know, sort of um, at the end, it, it, at the at the end of the world, uh, as the world, uh, in like the far, far western tip of of the island. Um, so it's kind of like, a, in terms of in terms of the Catabasis, this is kind of like the very, very uh, final descent. Yeah. And yet, so you know, I can you go about through it, these kind of quickly. If you think about it, the lava. Well, if you think about it, lava fields are like the newest Earth too. You know, they're like um, the newest. Rock. Yes. Um, and you said, yeah, one of these places is where Jules Verne wrote about descending into the Earth. <laughs> like, it, it, this is this is that spot. Yeah, yeah, this, for, yeah. Our journey to the center. Yeah, exactly. That's this is this is this is that spot where. Um, yeah, for anybody who's any science fiction fans, this is this is the place. Yeah, and there's a, so, there's a real I, um, I think I mentioned um, in my cheesy way um, um, some um, Lord of the Rings references, but actually Laura just had a good question. She says, "Can you tell us more about the literary, mythic, sure. or archetypal references that inform your work? Did Icelandic folklore inspire you? Perhaps in the sense that the land is imbued with a spiritual presence." Well, yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's it. That is that's definitely something that um, I mean, because it does have a, a, a great there's, there's a great folkloric tradition there. I think that I think one of the things that initially got me into it was reading and it was, uh, you know, that, that reading about um, reading sagas. I think I, the first time I found a, a saga was in the East Village at a used bookstore and it, um, probably when we were living together. I might have I, I, I think that might have been the time. And it was like, oh, this stuff is great. It's like, these are wonderful, wonderful stories. Um, but yeah, I think there's definitely um, a, uh, an interest in that folklore tradition. Folklore tradition. Um, it's not my tradition, so I don't pretend to, you know, um, you know, embody it or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly interested in, in what, these, what these places are, you know, culturally. Um, but also, also from a scientific standpoint, what, what are these geologically? You know, what are these um, what are these envir places environmentally? Those those are also things that I'm I'm looking at. Yeah, I, I worked with a guy from Iceland for a while, and he um, was one of the most rational, you know, thoughtful people. And yet he was he was like, of course, in the rocks and boulders, there's uh, elves that live inside them. I forget what they were called. They weren't elves. Like he. There's a definite. Um, they're, they're hidden people. They're called hidden people. That's the. Yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was great because you know I think um, I mean I, I don't want to focus too much on Iceland because I know it's 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 what you have took images from, but I know the work sort of expands out from that. So I, yeah. I think that, um, but I, I do think that some of their that folklore and sagas I've read some too they do lend themselves to seeing the world sort of unfold past just, it's a mountain. It's like, it's more than that, you know? Um, yeah. 
I think I think there's a respect for the landscape that, that I that I'm drawn to too. I think I, I think that's definitely definitely there. Um, and yeah, the, well, let's the, let's go um, ahead to see some of these. And of course, sure. Yeah. 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 And I think that's that's definitely that's definitely something I'm I'm considering when I'm um, when I'm uh, when I'm painting this stuff. Yeah. Um, and let's go into this. Um, you know, these like more panoramic ones. Um, I think this is this is at, at the Strander, which is a, a a place that's a pretty remote spot, and it's. Um, I, it, it has a it, it definitely has a folkloric element to it. There's a um, I think a tradition of witchcraft in that part of the part of the, the country. Um, where this history. one number forty six is a great example to me of it's it's of really balancing between rendering or, or sort of image and then also material. I mean, it just. Yeah, totally. I, I, I agree. I like, the, I like, thank you. I like how this came out. I think it was, it, it has that element of, of the abstraction that turns into something, it, it, it renders something, um, um, the happy accident that, that, oh. that talk, allows you to talk through paint, um, as opposed to, um, you know, spelling everything out. Um, yeah, and this is the kind of thing where it's like, I don't think you could plan this, <laughs> you know, and yet you, you can, you could stop, you know, you, you, you can, I mean, the only place you can, um, you, you have to know when to stop doing it. So, um, in yeah. order to not, With hey, this, so Laura, has, Laura has another question. I don't know if you can see him. This is Laura. Wooten, I can't, I here. can't, see, yeah, sorry. I can't, I can't see any of the questions. Okay, so Laura asks, can you talk about your choice of color palette? Some of the works we can up... trans What's that? Can you hear me, Frank? All right, I think either you've lost me or we've lost Frank um, for a I second. I can hear you, Warren. I think we may have lost. Can you see? Can you see me, Warren? Uh, I can. We can see your screen. Can you? I can. I, I, don't know I can you... hear you guys. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read a question to you. Can you talk about your choice of color palette? Some of the yeah, works contain a lot of neutral palette. It's a others... very, it tends to be a very, I, I tend to work with a very limited palette. I find that to be the, for me, the, the, the best way to, to sort of develop these things. Um, yeah. And that's, that's sort of how I, um, my work has evolved. It is, um, um, and it, yeah, there, that, that is, that's the, the color tends to be, um, you know, sort of, um, um, muted and restrained. That's uh, that's maybe the approach that I yeah. that I take. Um, Jess, Jesse Jesse Lambert, who's our old. Yeah, oh sorry. hi Jesse. Uh, Jesse Lambert, who's, <laughs> he's our old Skowhegan uh, friend. He was my roommate at Skowhegan. He asked around the same question. He talks about washed out look of old watercolor activity books, which I think lends a real gravity and. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Absolutely. That's a great. That's a great comment. Yeah. I and also natural history books and um, the sort of the, 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 the tradition of people traveling around before cameras with watercolor um, pads to, to record the world. Um, and, you know, kind of looking at that from, you know, from our 21st century perspective. Um, yeah, our, our, you our know, photographs. Where, where we, um, you know, the, where we do. yeah. Well, this this kind of dovetails, um, Edward Levine asked, can you share some of your artistic influences? Um, because I, I think that some of those things definitely inform. Oh, hi, Ed. Can you talk more about some other influences that might have um, fed into some of this work? Yeah, I, I'm trying to think who else, um, uh, in terms of painters, painters I'm looking at right now, um, I've been uh, I've been looking at a, 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 actually at a lot of a lot of painters from Iceland. I've been I've been definitely looking at the history of that, um, the romantics um, around sci around romantic science. That's uh, the the period of exploration. That's definitely something I've been looking at a lot. Um, you know, and with the limited palette, I mean, I'm an old fan of Morandi, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of a weird thing to to mention in this context, but yeah, definitely. I, I love that, that sort of uh, simplicity of, of approach to, to painting. Um, but also, of course, the Hudson River School painters, um, you know, um, people like Thomas Cole, um, 
we definitely have had a, a, a lot of interest in, in that work. Um, uh, Beardstat, you know, his sort of um, over sublimation of, of the West, um, th th that's a longer, um, right. uh, Frederick Church, people, people along those lines are, are, I'm definitely interested in, you know, from a cultural and historical standpoint, um, you know, um, I'm trying to think of any other, uh, you know, and of course it'll uh, elude me until after the talk, yeah. um, but those are, those are some of the people that I'm, I'm definitely looking at right now. Well, let me let me let me ask one more question. I'm going to combine together one from Laura and one from um, Steve Taylor, where they they're both awesome. asking about the relationship between the smaller works and the and the large paintings. Steve asked that yeah. the, the paintings he he says the paintings are kind of tough and committed, whereas these look fragile or restrained. Is that just a scale of medium, or do you go to a different headspace when working on these? And and I think Laura's asking some of the similar things. Um, yeah, I think I think the fragility is is part of um, is is part of what's what I like about the the smaller scale. I think that you know that, that they are they do allow a, a, a delicate um, approach to painting um, uh, that then can develop into um, I think the, the the harder, more rigorous um, uh, type of um, final final product. I don't know if that's if that's even the right word um, of the large scale work. Um, but they tend to be, you know, if they, they tend to, they both tend to be very committed. And I think it's, they're a little, um, they're a little deceptive in, in terms of their delicacy, but they, like, there definitely is a, there's a rigorous approach to how they're made. And I'm not going to give every secret away. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think, I think there's a, um, there, there is a, a sense of battle, you know, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, do you want to yeah. move forward through some of the some of the next slides? I want to make sure we see your book, and then um... yeah, absolutely. We've got we've got a few more minutes left here. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this was another project I did, and I worked on putting it together into an artist book, um, which um, I've I've done I've done you know uh, print design as you know as you have uh, for many years. So it's it was it was interesting for me to try to like. I'm going to do like the coolest thing I can in terms of, of printing and um, and making something that's actually like a real, you know, art, a piece of art in itself, and, but in the medium of of of, of the book. Right. And I'm, I'm I, as you know, as we both are, I think we're both lovers of books. Yeah. And the, well, the, this book's at Second Street Gallery, and it's for sale there. Um, and um, what I loved about looking at it is, I mean, I come from a world of sort of zines and comics, so seeing images um, in sequence um, feels natural to me. Um, and these work really well, both on the wall, but also in this book form. It's a totally different experience of looking yeah. at. Um, and, yeah, I and think with Otak is kind of. It's great. Yeah, I, yeah, I think we both have this kind of experience with underground comics and, you know, had a lot of friends who were involved in the in that that scene, especially back in for me back in Chicago. Um, yeah. And so yeah, sequence the idea of a of, of a book with image sequences and thinking that the sequence it doesn't have a, a narrative, but it has sort it sort of takes you through a, a, a psychological yeah you know, state. Yeah, there's a text. There's not a story like a like a like a plot. Yeah, but there's a there's a journey. I guess is a sort of a little bit of a right. cheesy way to talk about it. And um, it's the way I think about um, the sort of poetry comics work that I do where um, I, I don't wanna just illustrate something. I'm more trying to, well, like we talked about earlier, find something while also, um, you know, making something. So um, it's a great, it's a great book. Um, and like Kristen said on there, uh, yeah. it's available at the gallery. <laughs> so, um, Ed Levine, <laughs> question. Awesome. Um, is it a conscious decision yeah. to, give, to give them a sketchbook immediate quality? I mean, are you, I think this goes back to- Absolutely, this. absolutely. Yeah, the, the immediacy is, yeah, I definitely want them to have that feel of immediacy. And as, as we were discussing with um, the way that they're drawn, you know, there's a very intuitive element to the way that I'm, I'm rendering and sketching. You know, it has, uh, it's, um, you know, I, 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 I like the idea of automatic drawing in these, or right. that element. And so yeah. this is this is just this is just people, <laughs> people <laughs> looking at work after after time, and that that's um, which I, which was great. It's it's great to actually have them out in the world and um, to know that they were they were exhibited. Yeah, um, 
Laura, Laura has another comment, um, Laura Wooten, who she says, each work is like a short story in a collection. They can be enjoyed individually, but much more powerful when seen together, which I should say um, is particularly, it means, means a lot because um, the work that she has in the main gallery is all of a piece as well. To me, that's her it work. It looks lovely, yeah. That what I could see, I mean, if the only things I see are these tiny little pictures on Instagram and they look right. beautiful there. I would love to see them in person. Oh yeah, and, and so I think, so, um, I think uh, Kristen did a great job putting you two uh, together. Um, it's, it's a wonderful yeah. show. And, and I, I just wanted to include this as a thank you to everybody who helped me um, uh, to pull this together. Can you read them out? Because I, I think they're hard to read. Honestly. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Um, uh, it's I, Kristen, I like Megan, yeah. Marie, Stacey, Cameron, um, the, and, the, and the companies that helped to, um, to sponsor it and the gallery. Right. Hopefully people can. Um, well, what I, I loved about this photo when you showed it to me the other night too is, you know, you've got this rainbow, which is lovely, but it's almost like a trap because that, <laughs> that path goes right out to a cliff, it looks like. So it's, it, I think it, it really, um, it, it has the same feeling as some of the pictures where they're deceptively beautiful. And the next thing you know, you've, you've fallen in a chasm and you're lost. Um, I don't mean to be so like... I, 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 yeah, I, I don't know if they're that grim, but yeah, that's, yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't mean to be so like <laughs> so so that because I do think that they're hopeful as well. And I'll, I'll say it to the end. It's like right. I really feel a sense of endurance and beauty and and hope in them as well. So I, I don't mean to be so grim. You're right, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that there's a, a real um, strength to them. I think that's the thing is there's a real sort of robustness, and again. Um, as, as some people alluded to, like these flimsy watercolors, you know, on flimsy paper, and yet there's such a strength. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know that's you know I think that's a, that's also that's also the strength of the of the of the medium is you know they, they they're it's sort of ephemeral quality, and I think that that makes them in, in in to me at least that's that's kind of one of the things I'm, I've always been attracted to. About yeah. It. Yeah. Well, um, we've got just like two minutes left. So is there anything else you want to say about the work or if there's any last questions, Laura says she's honored to show with you. <laughs> so I'm honored to show with you too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, very, that's, very, yeah. that's very kind. I, I, would, um, I, I don't have anything else to say. I wouldn't be happy to take any other questions that are coming. Yeah, up. well, I think, I, think uh, I don't see any in here, although I'm gonna just check the chat just to make sure that I, don't, I didn't miss anything. Yeah, but um, I, unfortunately, I can't see the chat on my connection. Here. Yeah, that, that's fine. I think we- yes. um, And Frank, I'm going to um, stop your screen I think, here. Um, the only other thing I'd ask you is what's that? Okay. Oh, okay, that'll help. So Frank, what's next for you after this? I mean, what's, what's I, I know the pandemic is gonna put a, um, a, a break maybe on where you can go, but um, what's, what's next? Yeah, I mean, for me, the, um, the, next, uh, the next project is um, in April, it, it, we are gonna um, go ahead and do the Arctic Circle residency, as far as I know. It depends, and uh, you know, that's, that's absolutely dependent on, um, on nature right now. Uh, we have, um, you know, uh, we have a long journey, uh, I think, as a country and as a world to, to get past this thing. And uh, I hope, I do hope that, that I get to go in um, April. But um, I can't say for sure that that's actually what will happen. Um, and after that, yeah, I mean, I've, I'm going to do, um, I'm talking about doing a, a solo show here in um, at Lori Moto, which is a, it's a gallery in Queens. So I, I, will, um, I will get to um, uh, exhibit these paintings probably in March. Um, and that, again, is all dependent on our, our friend, the pandemic. Um, but well, it will be at least a place, a place to, to, for people to see them. Yeah, people can follow you on Instagram at I think for Frank Webster Studio. Um, yeah, it's Frank Webster Studio. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting better. I'm getting better at actually using that. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, yeah, and there's there's some great stuff on there. Well, all right. 
I'm going to say thanks. I'm going to let Kristen sign us off, but it's really great Fantastic. talking to you, man. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's awesome. Thank yeah, you no, so much for being me. part of this. And Frank, we also, um, Eric Benson is is here, and he says, hi, Frank. Congrats. Hey, what's up, Eric? Uh, Eric's another artist um, that we all know from New York that has also shown at Second Street Gallery. So Fantastic. Hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. <laughs> and, um, and Sharon Shapiro another artist here in town, um, enjoyed hearing about the work and um, she's happy she got to see the show in person and Sharon will have a show coming up at Second Street um, opening in June. So just a little shout out to Sharon. Um, but thank you everyone for joining us today. Sorry for the little technical glitches, but you know, that's Zoom and, and that's life now during the pandemic. But um, I'm gonna log off and get to the gallery. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so thank you again for um, both of you for, um, for being here and, and doing this with us. And, um, and yeah, if you're in Charlottesville and you have time over these next two days, um, come in and see the show. I'm, oh, I'm see the show, my... it's really great. Yeah, yeah. So thank, yeah, thank you, now. thank you guys. Um, I, and, and Kristen, thank, thank you for, for all of this. This is, this is awesome. Well, thank you. So um, we recorded today's event, and um, we'll be we'll be sharing that on um, over the next couple of days.